AC3. It's that butterfly face, no longer in my flesh. Came out of that cocoon and now I'm flying to his next. It's that butterfly face, just for no out to mess. And now I'm in my prime new creation for Jesus. Yeah. It's that butterfly face, new creation found his rest. I got my wings, I'm heaven sent. I'm in the flowers, not my scent. Nice. Yeah, here we go. Well, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Um, God is a good God, you know? Good God. Hope you're well. Um, I'm Brian Neitch, of course, and welcome to the, uh, the program. Um, okay, just doing a few things. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to read the Word of God. Look, I need to read. I'm going to read Luke, Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 6, and Mark chapter 7. And then John's back with me on 8, 9, 10, and, and the end of Mark. And so, um, glory to God. I just wanted to bring um, bring the word of God to, to you. And um, that's it, man. Let the word of God heal you, deliver you, transform you. He's everything. He is everything. So, um, praise the Lord. Let's get into it. Let me pray first. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we just worship you, and we honor you, and you're so good to us. We love you, Lord. Thank you for anointing this message. The words that are coming out of my mouth uh, and, and going into everyone's lives. Thank you for the scripture. It changes things. You said if you um, you believe for the prophet, the reward of the prophet, and we receive the prophet, you'll receive the reward. And we receive it, Lord. Revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here we go. So, um, okay, Matt, Mark, chapter number cinco, right? Uh, let me zoom in, get everybody, um, see how, how much I can go here. Okay. Jesus heals a man with a demon. Here we go. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of um, Gerasians. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and he and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. So these demons were strong in this guy. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. Man, this guy's in torment, obviously. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him, crying out with a loud voice. He said, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you or I beg you by God. Do not torment me. He's almost like, I'm almost adjure you. What's adjure mean? Look up adjure. Let's see. Oh, well. I guess uh, it took over. <laughs> oh, let's go back to Mark chapter 7. If we can get there. My goodness. Well, we um we got that deal. Mark chapter 5. Here we go. Uh praise the Lord. Amen. He says, I adjure you, come out. So I adjure you, I, I beg, I plead, do not torment me, for he was saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Jesus said that. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now, at great, now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, send us to the pigs. Let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out, entered the pigs, and he heard, and, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned into the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had the legion sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, yeah, at peace. And they were afraid. 
And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. Why did you beg him, these people? They were afraid. Fear had captured them. They weren't free, you know. Verse 18, as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. You imagine that? I would too. You know, Lord, I want to go with. 19, and he did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim it in Decapolis, how much Jesus had done for him and everybody marveled. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And seeing him, he fell at his feet. Very famous moment. And imploring, implored him earnestly, saying, My daughter, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be well and live. 24. And he, being Jesus, went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she'd had and was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Wow. Wow. So there we are, right? Um, let me do this. So here we go. Here's the scene, right? This guy. This guy, Jairus, coming to get healed. His daughter, get, to get his daughter healed. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, Jesus is like, yeah, I'll go with you. All of a sudden, this lady changes everything, you know, just busts in. You know, and, and I just want you to notice Jairus' reaction. Notice his reaction. It's, it's inter interesting. Let's keep reading. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I... Touched even his garments, I will be made whole or be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body. Mm. She felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in him that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garment? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you and you yet you say who touched me they're freaking out and he looked around to see who had done it but the woman knowing what had happened to her came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth i wonder if she thought that i steal from him did i steal his power interesting verse 34 uh, and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well go in peace that's wholeness by the way and be healed of your disease. Wow. Glory to God. While he was still speaking, there came the ruler. Notice the whole time Jairus didn't say, woman, what are you doing? Get out of here. We're on a mission. We have something to do. None of that. Praise the Lord. None of that. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Someone came from the ruler's house who said, daughter, your, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus, ha ha ha, the master, said to the ruler of the synagogue. Notice he dealt with he dealt with this. Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Look, sometimes, look, sometimes you gotta you gotta put your foot down. You gotta cut out the crap. Literally. Cut out the, the garbage. Cut out the, 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 the fear, the people who are in your life full of fear. Cut them out. I'm low. Cut them out. Sometimes you got to do that. All right, here we go. 38. 
They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And they, and when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. But he put them outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. More unbelief. See that? More unbelief. But not Jesus. 41. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talithia kumai. Which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking. For she was 12 years old. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this. And told them to give her something to eat. Glory to God. Another, another wonderful moment. Glory to God. The power of darkness destroyed. Let's read chapter 6. Here we go. And he went away from there and came to his hometown. And his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? Like they probably knew him, right? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hand? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joas, and Judas, and Simon? Or Simeon? Or Simon? Simon. And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. That's the first thing you should never do. Don't take offense at Jesus. You won't receive anything from him. Verse 4, And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And, and he marveled because of their unbelief. This, my friends, is wicked. Unbelief is wicked, twisted, evil. And he went about among the villages teaching. Verse 7, and he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics, <laughs> a long garment. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent, and they cast out many demons. Now he's talking about the, uh, the disciples here. And anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Glory to God. By the way, you can do that too. You can do that too. Believe and do it. Command the devil out of people. Lay hands on people and say, be healed and believe that God will heal them. That's our job. That's our role. We're the body of Christ. We're his ambassadors. Glory to God. Verse 14. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. Herod probably scared. But others said, he is Elisha. And others said, he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias. Oh, that's his, his um, adulterous uh, fling. His, brother's, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodian, Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man and kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. 
Herod heard him gladly. That is interesting. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and leading men in Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. He's probably lusting after this girl. That's not okay. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish. You know Herod's drunk here. Ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, for what should I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. Gosh, now this little girl and mom are going to always be known as the ones who requested the death and the murder of John the Baptist. Wow. 25. And she came in immediately with haste to the king, like running in, you know, and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. But because of his oaths, his guest, he did not want to break his word to her. See, and immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. Oh, and when his disciples heard of it, they came and they took his body and laid it in the tomb. Oh, we're going to meet you, John, one day in heaven. Well, look, Herod could have stood up and said, no, I am not going to commit murder. He done messed up, man. The peer pressure of humans overwhelmed him. He needed to listen to God. Verse 30, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. By the way, his, his cousin had just been murdered. Mm. And look at this. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place. And the hour is now late. Send them away into the surrounding county, countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. <laughs> They're like, what? And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do we have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups of green grass on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and fifties and by fifties and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up into the heaven to heaven and he blessed and broke the loaves and gave to them the disciples to set before the people. He divided the two fish among them all and they ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Glory to God. By the way, that is amazing. It just kept on coming. I've heard of, I've heard of a miracle like this recently where people made peanut butter jelly sandwiches. And they went into a village and they, they begin to hand out their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And they begin to hand out their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And they begin to hand out their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And they continue to hand out their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, hundreds of them. And they didn't make hundreds of them. They made 10 or something for the group. Now, you don't have to believe it. You can stay in unbelief, but God is the God who doesn't change. His miracles are today and forever. Glory to God. He's still doing it, man. 45, and immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida. While he dismissed the crowd and after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, 
But they, when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Oh, so much in this, so much in this. 51, and he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astonished, for they did not understand about the loaves. But their hearts were hardened. See, don't let your heart be hardened. Pray to the Lord today, right now. Lord, let's do it. Agree with me. Father, open and soften my heart so that I can learn more, believe more, receive more, hear your word more in Jesus' name. See it more clearly. Open our eyes more clearly to the word, to what you do, to your miracles. In the name of Jesus, we believe we receive it. Uh, 53, when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. Oh, imagine. Move. That's like really mo rowing hard here. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about to the whole region and began to bring, uh, oops, and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard was he, that he was. You imagine you just you get out of the car and whew, just get flocked. That's Jesus. He worked hard on the earth. Right? He just didn't just show up, die on the cross. He worked hard. Thank you, Jesus, for working so hard. Making Alaska and Hawaii, all these wonderful places in the world, Japan, China, Russia. And wherever he came in the village, villages, cities, and countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might even touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. He worked hard. He poured out the power of God everywhere. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So, so wonderful, Jesus. You're so wonderful. All right, here we go. Chapter 7. We're going to close, finish with this one. What a hardworking master. Now, when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that the, some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. It's like, what, 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 what do you know? You don't eat with your fingers sometimes? Come on, boy. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly. Holding to the tradition of the elders. Notice it doesn't say the Bible. It's the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And that's good practice. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees... And the scribes asked him, why do, you, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well, did, it a lot, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, the, this people honors me with their lips, but, not, but their heart is far from me. Oh, I literally remember reading this text saying, oh, the generations that do that. Verse 7, in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Oh, it pierces my heart now just to know that people, people serve and love their, their teachings of men, but they forget the Bible. They forget God, his word, Jesus, the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. And he gave those who believe in him the power to become the sons of God. That's it. Not tradition. Not some, not some church father you think is who this and who is that. And it's the word of God. It's the word of God. Let me take a moment here, my beloved. Hold tight to the word of God. Yes, in his spirit. But go back to his word. Check the spirit. Is it the right one? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Sometimes you have to, the Bible says, test the spirits. 
Hold to the word. Peter, Peter writes in the first book, we have this precious word, this sure word, more sure than when I heard his word on the mountain. I heard God say, this is my beloved son. But we have the word of God, the scripture. Hold to the Bible. Hold to the covenant. The testament. That's the answer. That's the answer. Well, brother, you can't just be Bible only. No, you can't. You have to follow the Holy Ghost. And you listen to him by reading the word of God. And then he brings it back into your mind. Glory to God. Not the tradition of men, religion, or some church. Churches are great. But you always go back to the man, the master, God, man, Jesus, our Lord. Take note, my beloved. I, only, I say this because you are loved by me. Well, of course, and God. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 8, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. Notice that's your tradition. Look at me. Look what I'm doing. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother. And whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother whatever you would have gained from me is korban, that is given to God, then you have no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother. Thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and such things you do. And he called the people to him again. Look, let me just say one more thing. Hopefully you're following along still. You know, we're already 27 minutes in. Look, check the traditions that you do. Check them against the word of God. Make sure they're correct. Because if not, look what it says. You're making the word of God void. And he called the people to him again and said to him, you know, I'm going to change this to the um, King James. Amen. I think I can switch versions. Yeah, right here. 713. 1900. I hope this is the right one. Okay. Um, and when he called the people, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken or listen unto me, every one of you, and understand. There's nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. The words, by the way, he's talking about the words. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever thing, whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? He's talking about food, right? This is where he cleans up where we can eat bacon now. <laughs> Verse 19, because it entered, entereth not into his heart, but into his belly and goes out into the drought, purging all meats. And he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. And listen to this. In men, are, come, this is what comes out of men. You can change this. You can clean that heart up. Get born again. 21, from, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thieves, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an eye, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. I love foolishness. What is this, Lord? Foolishness? No. I like to laugh. Just kidding. Verse 23, all these evil things, twisted, by the way, the word evil means twisted, come from within and defile the man. Yeah, see, they're all like, they're thinking about like, what about the food and the drink? You know, can't eat shrimp. No, 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 no. Jesus is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Changing it up, man. 
It's the things that come out of your heart that defile you. Out of your heart into the world with your mouth. 24, and from thence he rose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. Yeah, yeah, see, everybody knew. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. He's talking about the Jews, right? That's his, that's his mission to the Jews first. For it is not meat. It's not for a, basically it is not able to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, for this saying, go your way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He wants to help them all, man. Verse 30. And when she was coming to their house, she found the devil had gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the sea of Galilee through the midst of the coasts of Decapolis. And they bring, and they bring unto him one that was deaf. And had an impediment in his speech. So he stuttered of some type. And they besought him. They begged Jesus or searched for him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his finger into his ear. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, That is, be open. I have no idea what that means, but. Let's look that up real quick. It's Arabic. <laughs> Let's see how it sounds. Let's see if it'll it'll read it for us here. Read aloud here. Epitha. Epitha. Okay. Be open. And straightway his ears were open. And the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spit he spit. He spake plain, and he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, the more, so much the more, a great deal they published it. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all these things, all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Yeah, well, praise the Lord. He sure does. And that's it. Glory to God. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. If you have a if you have a deaf ear, I command it to be open in the name of Jesus. If you if you have stutter, be loose tongue in the name of Jesus. If you're dealing with cancer, cancer die and wither and flee out of your body in the name of Jesus. If you have pains and arthritis, arthritis be gone in the name of Jesus. Get out of that inflammation. Get out of those joints and that those bones and all those tendons, muscles. Go in the name of Jesus. Hold on to that word. It's for you. His word is for you. And I bless you. Look, I just look, if you have a if you have any anything, any issue you need to deal with, go to the Savior. He's the one. Amen. He is the one. He's the one. He's the one who changes everything. I'm telling you. He's the one who changes everything. It's that butterfly effect. New creation found his rest.